I'm here at St. Stephen's Catholic Church in Portland, Oregon, and today is the second day in our novena to St. Michael the Archangel. Now, some people have asked me if I could please post a copy of the consecration prayers, and I will do so. I will attach them, uh, I'll attach a link to the description beneath this video. If not today, then look for it tomorrow, uh, but I will get that done. I realize not all of you can come here to the church in Portland to pick up a copy of the Holy Card. Um, let's see here. Today we are looking at the choir of angels known as the cherubim. Today we, yesterday we looked at the seraphim, which is generally considered the first uh, among the um, choirs of angels. We have the three hierarchies. We have the top hierarchy, which is the seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. And then we have uh, the next hierarchy and the third hierarchy. Now, you can look these up, actually, in the chaplet to St. Michael. Now, uh, you will see here the Novena Prayer, and there is a link to, to that in the description below this video. It's also found on the bulletin page of our website, uh, dated September 20th. And in the chaplet to St. Michael, you'll see all nine choirs. You see... By the intercession of St. Michael in the celestial choir of seraphim, and then of cherubim, and then of thrones. That's the top hierarchy. And then you have the dominions, the powers, and the virtues. That's the second hierarchy. And then you have the principalities, the archangels, and the angels. That's the third hierarchy. So three hierarchies for the Holy Trinity, and three uh, choirs of angels in each of the three hierarchies, which makes nine. It's very Trinitarian whenever we do in multiples of threes like that. All right, so yesterday we looked at the seraphim, the fire bearers, the bearers of fire and the source of warmth and the ardor of love in our hearts and in our souls from uh, divine charity infused as a supernatural virtue. And today we look at cherubim. Well, let's, let's see what Dionysius the Areopagite has to say about the cherubim. Mm, all right. The cherubim. Here we are. The neri... Uh, no, we have something else here. Uh, right? Oh, okay, here we are. The name cherubim signifies the power to know and to see God, to receive the greatest gifts of his light, to contemplate the divine splendor in primordial power, to be filled with the gifts that bring wisdom, and to share these generously with subordinates as a part of the beneficent outpouring of wisdom. Okay. Um, now let's see, what is it that we pray in the chaplet? By the intercession of St. Michael in the celestial choir of cherubim, may the Lord grant us the grace to leave the ways of sin and run in the paths of Christian perfection. All right, well, that makes sense because if the name cherubim signifies the power to know and to see God, then knowing and seeing God, we would seek the grace to leave the ways of sin and run in the paths of Christian perfection. To know and to see God, to receive the greatest gifts of his light, which refers to our intellect, to contemplate the divine splendor in primordial power, to be filled with the gifts that bring wisdom, to know and to see God, and to share these generously with subordinates as a part of the beneficent outpouring of wisdom. So the cherubim share these with subordinates. And, and we understand that about all these choirs of angels, that it starts with the seraphim, and all that they have and all they receive from God is passed down through the various ranks of angels. And when we get to the last rank of angels, which is angels, they pass it on to us. But we receive it from, we receive these things from the cherubim, but we receive them through the other choirs, and we receive them generally directly from the angels. So we receive this power to know and see God from the cherubim, but we receive it through the angels. We don't receive it from the cherubim directly. Isn't that interesting? 
Let's see what the Catholic Encyclopedia has to say about cherubim. It's quite a long chapter, so I'm just going to read a little bit here. Uh, in um, Article 3 here, under cherubim, as this uses the word Jehovah, by which me, we mean the Y-H-W-H, which is um, sort of uh, filled out in different ways. Some sources will say Yahweh, others will say Jehovah, um, others will say the Lord. So we'll just, um, we'll just refer to the Lord because it's less controversial, if you know what I mean. All right. As the Lord was surrounded by figures of cherubim in his sanctuary on earth, so he is, according to scripture, surrounded in reality by cherubim in his court above. So we know that in the temple, or in the tabernacle built by Moses, and in the temple, there was the Ark of the Covenant, and surrounded by the Ark were two enormous um, uh, cherubim of, of, of metal that were um, plated with, with gold, or maybe they were of beaten gold, and they were Im immense. They, uh, you know, they extended the whole uh, length and height of the room. So as they were, as our Lord is surrounded by figures of cherubim in his sanctuary on earth, so he is, according to scripture, surrounded in reality by cherubim in his court above. We think about that. So the seraphim, the cherubim, and the thrones are the ones who are right there in the heavenly court with God. And so the cherubim are surrounding him in reality in his court above. The function ascribed to these heavenly servants of God's majesty is that of throne bearers or carriers of his divine majesty. Well, that's very interesting. They're throne bearers or carriers of his divine majesty. Well, that'll be so... Let's be thinking about that tomorrow when we look at the choir of thrones. How is it that the cherubim are differentiated from the thrones? If the cherubim are the throne bearers, what are the thrones? So that's one question to be thinking about for tomorrow. In Psalm 17, the psalmist describes the sudden descent of the Lord to rescue a soul in distress in the following words. He bowed the heavens and came down, and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and flew, and flew upon the, wind, upon the wings of the wind. Now some see then in the cherubim a species of storm spirits, or angels through whose agency storm clouds gathered, as if they were God's living chariot, swift as the wings of the wind. Wow. Wonderful image to think about. So that makes sense because if they are throne bearers or carriers of his divine majesty, then he comes down on the wings of the wind um, he, that he rode upon a cherub and flew upon the wings of the wind. The cherub would almost be like, a, a, well, a throne bearer. That's very interesting because uh, there is a, uh, there are the handles that are attached to the um, Ark of the Covenant to carry it by, and you have the, the cherubim on either side. All right, let's continue here. The idea of cherubim as a chariot of God seems indicated in First Paral Paralipomenon, 18, also known as First Chronicles 18, where David gives gold for the temple cherubim, who are described uh, as the chariot, not probably because they had the outward shape of a vehicle, but because the temple cherubim symbolized the swift-winged living thrones upon which the Almighty journeys through the heavens. That's a wonderful uh, vision or an image of the cherubim as being like chariots. All right, well, let's consider that then. And I'll leave the rest of the article for you to take a look at. You know, the Catholic Encyclopedia is available online, readily available. And oh, there are also copies of it here and there and around. It's a good reference work to have. So as we are praying this Novena to St. Michael, be thinking about your intentions. This is the second day, and it can take a few days. It can take three, four days to really figure out what we're praying for. 
And you might be adding intentions even up to the very last day, which is just fine. It's just fine. You add as many atten- intentions as you like. You're praying the novena for whatever the intentions are. And God can reveal intentions to us along the way. The saints themselves can reveal intentions along the way. And I think it's especially fitting that we are considering only one choir per day, but we're praying to St. Michael and all the choirs of angels each day. Now, if yesterday then we prayed that the seraphim through St. Michael, his intercession and the celestial choir of seraphim, that the Lord would make us worthy to burn with the fire of perfect charity. All right, that was yesterday, but we're still praying for that today. So the fire of perfect charity, um, certainly uh, all of these things we're praying for in the chaplet can be our intentions for the novena but there may be other things you need to pray for as well. So today, as we focus on the cherubim, let's look again. We pray through the intercession of St. Michael, the archangel, and the celestial choir of cherubim, that the Lord grant us the grace to leave the ways of sin and to run in the paths of Christian perfection. Now, Christian perfection. Now, that does not refer to perfectionism. Not that we would seek to do everything just perfectly, although when we do things uh, in a perfect manner, it means that we're doing them completely, completely. Um, That's a little bit different of a meaning than uh, what we might think of perfectionism. Completely. Well, completion really doesn't happen until we die. We reach or we strive for um, a certain Christian perfection, which is imperfect. It can only be perfected by our death because as long as we are living, there is something undone. It's like we can't, it's like the church can't really um, approve an apparition, let's say an apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary, while it's still going on. It has to be complete. And once it's complete, then it can be approved because uh, it can be examined and approved if it is worthy of approval because there's nothing added to it. And so it is with a life. We cannot be judged before we die because we still have an opportunity either to reject God, we hope that doesn't happen, or we have an opportunity to get things right. Every new day, every new breath, every new decision, every new act of the will is an opportunity to get things right. So our lives cannot be perfect until we die. And even, you know, even if, if they weren't that perfect in, in the way we understand that, even if they weren't, even if it's not a good life, all right? If it's not a good life, it's still perfect when it is complete, because then it can be judged. But we pray that we may strive for Christian perfection, Christian perfection, which means conforming ourselves to the will of God and to leave the ways of sin and run in the paths that our Lord has prepared for us. Now this makes more sense. If we think about the chariot of God and the chariot travels along a path, our Lord rides upon the cherubim along the wings of the wind and there is a direction in which he goes. Now we wish to follow that direction. So the cherubim lead the way taking God where he wishes to go. They are the throne bearers. Let us follow the throne of God. Let us follow the Lamb wherever he goes. We can consider, of course, this altar of God appropriately to be the throne of God because it is there that the tabernacle sits. It is there that our Lord is always present among us. As long as that sanctuary lamp is burning, our Lord is present among us. Other than, on, other than from, uh, you know, Good Friday to the Easter Vigil, our Lord should be present among us, at least in a, in a, in a Catholic uh, parish church that is being used all the time. So let us think about that. If we are to follow the Lamb wherever He goes, well, where is he? Well, he's certainly here in the church. He's seated upon his throne, upon the cherubim, 
and the cherubim being the throne bearers. And even if we can't see the cherubim, that's not the point because they're angels. But then where is, the, is it that the Lord is going? And he has a path for all of us in our lives. And it's for us to discern where that path is headed, but always be willing to say yes and to follow the Lord wherever he goes, to follow the Lamb wherever he goes. All right, with that, uh, let us pray our Novena prayer. And at this point, you can click on a link below the video to pray the Novena prayer. And we'll see you tomorrow as we consider the next choir of angels known as the Thrones. And don't miss a day of prayer with us.